everybody, this is the Youth Podcast, and we are going to talk to the Chase Fruscio tonight, an aspiring pastor, uh, already is a key volunteer at the church he serves at currently, Bayshore Community Church. Can I give them an amen? Bayshore? Because they employed me, so they you got to love them, so I, I can't be thankful enough for them. Well, here it was really because it was really because of my connections. Yes, there. Yeah. So if it wasn't for Chase, I probably wouldn't even be. I don't know. I, I, some could argue alive. <laughs> you might be on the streets. <laughs> you definitely don't really wouldn't know. be. A, you w- definitely wouldn't be getting married. That's you for definitely sure. Definitely wouldn't. <laughs> That's for sure. I did not meet okay. Aubrey I, and Chase. If you guys you know, do not know, are actually siblings. So, yep. with that being said, Chase is the reason that we really encountered because I was friends with Chase first, and that was his sister yeah. that just passed by, Katie. And um, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's fine, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's the unsung hero of our story, of our love story. Yep. Ari doesn't want to admit it, but... No, she won't admit right. it. But we can admit it here because she's not around currently, and she'll, she'll see it yep. later. When you see this, Aubrey, we're sorry. Not really. No, we're not. But, it's the truth. <laughs> All right, I've been asking everyone to start this show. Just one simple question. Is cereal soup? I So I think it's about how you eat it. Mm. Okay? I've thought about this a lot. Yeah. And if, like, some people, it's like, especially I feel like older people, they just kind of, like, wet the cereal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit of milk, just so it's a little wet. But, like, dude, look. Like, I want my Cheerios to be swimming. You know what I'm saying? Easy. So, like, for me, it's probably more like soup anyways. Yeah. But then there's the question of, like, you know, sometimes soup is – it's like multiple things mm. mm-hmm. all coming together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get it. So, I, I think texture-wise, you're telling me the soggy means it's soup. So, well, but I don't go so- – I don't let it get soggy, though. Yeah. It's a good question. It's a good, it's, keep the it's still, for yeah, a long we're time. still going to be thinking about that. Hey, if there's anyone in the chat that wants to comment what their soup or cereal is, please do so. All right, question but I number. Think for me right now, yes. it might be, might oh, be, yeah. soup. Might be soup. soup. I think it's soup. Okay, gonna, so we have soup for now. Me. You can quote me. We're quoting him on that, actually, in the comments. Chase is for soup. I am of a soup cereal theology. Cereal. That is correct. <laughs> okay, there we go. It's in the chat. All right, let's get down to it. Number one, the first real question we have is your favorite thing to do during the quarantine. I'm sure there's multiple, but if you could just tell us a couple things that you really enjoy having this time to you. Mm. Well, it's not TikTok. Mm. So. <laughs> Preach it. It is for Aubrey. I just, it is for Aubrey. And many but, people. But I think the main thing, like I've, I've enjoyed, like, I've been playing guitar more. I've played, I haven't played video games since before school started in August. Or, I mean, a little bit here and there. But not, like, sat down and played, like, through a Zelda game. So that's been fun. But I think more than anything, it's been just, like, the time I've had to just read. Mm. And that's unpopular answer. But I'm a huge reader. Yeah. And I have loved just being able to just sit and read a book, I think. What is... So that, I'd say that, that's the answer. What is one book that you would say changed how you how you lead how you interact with people what's one of the one of the greatest books if you were to recommend to the youth what would be something you would say hey i wish i would have read this sooner or maybe you read it in time i don't hmm. know hmm there's probably many i'd say either mm, there are a lot divine direction by craig rochelle mm amazing it's about finding god's purpose and direction for your life it's amazing um ruthless elimination of hurry by john mark comer i've Very just book. recently been on a thing of just like like only reading and listening to him for yeah. a little bit because he's just next level um but yeah probably those two and then problem of god by mark clark definitely revolutionized my thoughts because it's all about it's a book all about the problems that non-christians have with christianity mm. and it's kind of a book on apologetics for people who don't know what apologetics is the defense of our faith so knowing how to defend our faith against 
um, the, it's, you know, the criticisms and the people who maybe are like, you know, science is the only truth and how can you believe in God and everything? It's a book that's got answers to those kinds of questions. Yeah. That, or how can you believe in a God who lets COVID-19 happen? Like that's a book that's got those kinds of questions and answers. So it's really, that is a book that took like my, like the intellectual mental part of my faith, like not just like believing something, but like knowing mm. things and having to think critically about those kinds of things. That was a book that really integrated that part into my faith when it yeah. wasn't really a part of it before. So I'd recommend that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that probably also makes, for some. It makes you think about it for yourself too. Yeah. So that's so. what I was getting. Maybe for some that would even make it their own faith because I know a lot of people right. growing up in youth groups are basing their faith off their families or off right. people they aspire to be. Right. And that's not a bad thing, but uh, right. I think if we just consider to make it our own, that's probably a good read to check out is the problem of God. Yeah. Cool. I love that answer. I love that. A lot, so, a lot of the book, those book, actually, like all three of those books I just said are books that kind of help you make your faith your, your own. own. So there you go. Well, there you go. You can't go wrong. <laughs> you will make your faith your own on these recommended reads. That's right. Cool. Well, going off of making faith your own, what would you say is the biggest step of faith that you have taken? to date hmm it's got to be moving to canada <laughs> mm, yes it's got to it's got to be yes yeah, so um, talk to us a little so bit about why you did so for everybody who doesn't know i graduated high school from y high uh in 20 may 2018 and in september 2018 i moved from here to all the way on the like we're here all the way over here on on the continent, across the continent to British Columbia, Canada, in right outside of Vancouver on the West Coast. And there's a, there's a, I mean, we could talk about that for an hour easily. <laughs> right. Especially all the, com like all the conversations we had when I was thinking about going and everything. Like that was crazy. But the story was, I felt like God was telling me I needed, why well, would, Gavin's getting cereal. But, I'm doing the live stream with JT right now. Yeah, Gavin, so get on. Brooke, get yeah. on. Get lost. Your YouTube. Yeah. Just eat. Go stream. Go Anyways. Stream hey, guys. God love you. Gavin and I are also siblings. It's a whole small world. Yeah, and there's my Anyways. sibling hiding in the half corner. Anyways. So moving to, I went to Village Church there. They have a school of ministry and there was a lot of unknowns with that, like a couple months. So I had, I had to see if I could get a job while I was there, if I could get a visa and all these other things. I had to figure out where I can live and if I could afford it. Um, all of these things that I didn't know going in that I just kind of had to see if God was going to provide. And like, for an example, about a month before I left, I was going to Young Life Camp in August, which I went with JT and we went to Rockbridge yep. and I had no idea where I was going to live yet. Like I didn't, I'm not, like I didn't know if I was going to have a place to live. I didn't know if there was going to be anybody that would take me in or if I was going to, like I tried everything I knew I could try to do and nothing was working out. And I was like, all right, God, like I'm just going to give it to you. Like if I'm supposed to go, you're going to find me a place to go. Like you're going to make it happen. And so I was like, I'm not going to think about it during the week while I'm at camp. I'm just going to be at camp. And so I went to camp and the end of the week came and I like, you know, our phones are off the whole week. So I couldn't even think about it anyways. And, you know, I was just praying about it and hoping that God was going to come through and come to find out the last day of camp, we get our phones back. I turn it on like an hour later, I get an email from Victor, who's the head of the school. And it's like, we got a place. Come on. Like, <laughs> You're going, and it was like Crazy. tears, like, right. because I can't, like at camp and every moment up until that point, like I remember one of my friends, Luke at the camp was like, dude, so like, you don't got anywhere to live. Are you still going? Like, that's pretty much it. Right. Like you can't, I can't do it. I was like, no, I'm going. Like, yeah. Yeah. I was like, it's happening. Crazy. He was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I was like, dude, like God told me I'm going, like I'm going like, this isn't like a, Oh, like God, like told me like, no, like God legit told me I'm going. Yeah. So it's going to work out if he told me to go. So, man, that's so cool to hear because that's real stories with real faith. 
God just really needs to give me grace for siblings in this time of siblings quarantine. in the quarantine are going to be. Can y'all just pray for me, please? Are going to be it. They're going to make us or break us. <laughs> but hey, I just want to say to people watching real faith with real people churches, like for our case, Pastor Drew or even myself, where all these youth are like, oh, like it takes big faith. And I don't think I have that. No, it's people all around that are actually believing in Jesus to pull through. That's and right. Because of that faith, it has taken chases to places you would never get to go without faith. Right. So yeah. it's pretty incredible. That was an amazing year that I learned a lot of, and I would have not gotten any of that if I hadn't chosen to just trust. Yeah. So, yeah. So with that being in there, I kind of know I'm setting you up. So you went there because you had a, a realization. You don't just go to a ministry school because you want to do math for a living, right? You go to a ministry right. school <laughs> because you're trying to get into ministry. So when when did you realize right. that call? When did you realize that, oh, you know what? I, I don't care sure. what it looks like. I'm going to Canada because right. I know I'm called to ministry. Right. Oh, well, man. I mean, it's kind of just always been a thing. Like, so kind of part of when I was trying to figure out, I grew up uh, knowing that I wanted to be in ministry. And then I got older and like high school and middle school and like girls became a thing. And like, right. I was really passionate about like writing and acting and I did, did a lot of drama stuff and I wanted to do that. And, and then I want, I like all these different things. I wanted to be a professor of English literature at one point, because again, I love reading and writing. <laughs> Some yeah. people are like, Oh my God, shoot me now. But like I can spend hours reading and whatever, but um, you know, all these different avenues, all these different, and then, you know, just life happens where you experience like, trauma and you experience like hardship and uh, failure and all those things. So you get lost and you get unfocused. And so part of when I was kind of rediscovering God again in mm -hmm. high school at some point, not that I ever left, but that it was not, it had become monotonous and just a part of life. It wasn't like a real relationship and walk with God. So part of when I was rediscovering all of that in high school um, was I kind of started fasting. We did, a, was when we did our fast, uh, me and JT have a history, in case anybody hasn't figured it out. Yes. He's, he's marrying my sister. We went to Young Life Camp together. We did a fa it's fast together. Years. It's the whole thing. Yeah. All kinds of it's. This is what relationship and brotherhood looks like in Jesus. Just Agreed. so everybody knows. Agreed. Anyways, we're doing a fast. And I'm trying, the whole point is to figure out, okay, God, what's next after high school? Because I know, I knew it wasn't college. I just had this feeling like God's not sending me to university right now. Like something else is going on. Uh huh. Um, and so I just remember, like, I, I remember the, one of the first days of the fast, I was like, all right, I'm going to go spend time alone with God. And I went into my room and I tried to sit down and pray and it just wasn't happening. And I felt like for some reason I just had a thought, like, oh, maybe I'll read some of my old journals. And so I read, uh, I've been journaling since I was in second grade. And so I started looking back through all these old journals and there was all of these entries about me feeling like God was calling me to ministry and like, that I wanted to be a pastor so bad and wanted to be like leading people and all these things, like all the way back from second grade, all the way like littered through up through until now. And it's just yeah. like, God was like, like, Hey, like, I know you're worried about what I'm, you know, what the plan is, but like, I've had you since then, since second grade, since whenever, Wow. like I let you in on it. Like I, like, you know, like I've let you know that I've got you, that there's a plan and that you're going to be doing ministry. So like, just trust me that I've got the next part. And then, yeah. I, you know, then I went to village. And so I've known for a long time that I wanted to be in ministry and that it was going to be a part of my life for sure. And that's incredible. Especially that bit you said about um, just looking back and God kind of showed you like, man, I don't even know if you're thinking about it in let's say seventh, sixth, eighth, potentially you could have been, but uh, it's funny how God kind of pointed you back and was like, Hey, I've been, I've been kind of guiding you this whole time, you know, it's right. been this this whole process, and I think that's what a lot of the youth need to hear. Like, hey, if if you've been dealt a bad deck of cards, like, know that the God that guided Chase is the God that guides you, right? Like, you're gonna right. look back and be like, man, he set me up perfect for what I'm doing yeah. today. Whether that's a teacher, a pastor, a social worker, a garbage man, woman, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, totally. Whatever that looks like, roll with it. Are there gar Are there garbage women? Hmm. Do women do women do that? If anyone finds one, they should I mean, send a picture hey, to I prove mean, it. I, I, all power can. to them. Yeah. They can. 
but do they does but anybody i mean first of all does prefer. anybody want to be a garbage man second of all do any women want to do that let us know Good in the point. comments yeah please let us know and if you <laughs> anybody one... an aspiring garbage worker <laughs> where you, is anybody's dream to work in waste management you know how they say wake up and smell the roses it's Totally different from my career. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally different. Maybe that's not your. Maybe that's not your call. Maybe you're called somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah, if you like the smell of roses, don't do garbage disposal. That makes no yeah. sense. But we're rolling with it. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember, if you remember anything from this today, remember. Yeah. Give it to them. <laughs> that that it's. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't want to be a garbage person if you like smell of roses. Okay. Hey, uh, just a side note, just want to say this is what community looks like. I hope you have friends like this where you can just hang out um, and people kind of, the real reason I'm doing the youth every Monday is for you guys to get some information, but also to see what relationships look like. Like last week you got to saw Pastor Jake or see Pastor Jake. This week you get to see Chase, all in different avenues of life, but nonetheless still genuine friends that are loving and caring. Um, so I hope you guys can find those people, even if it means in the quarantine sitting down and having a, a, a FaceTime lunch. People are doing that now, mm. which we should try a coffee yeah, like that soon. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm down. And the I'm last in. question to sum up this, this, what do you call it? Uh, wisdom, I guess is the best word mm. <laughs> to, sum, to sum up all of what we talked about is something I believe all middle schoolers and high schoolers should hear. If you want to fast forward to this part, I would encourage you to do so. If you really, really want to hear one important question. And it's this one. What is a lie the enemy or even yourself kept mm -hmm. telling you in middle or high school? What is a what mm -hmm. is a lie for you that almost held you back from <sighs> your calling? I would say there's a first of all, there's a lot. Right. Because middle school, high school is crazy. Like, you know, just certifiably insane. Yeah. But I think probably the biggest one was that I didn't – I think the biggest one was that I didn't deserve love mm. and that I couldn't accept or believe that anybody, especially Jesus, would love me. So I started – I tried to like overcompensate and try to not be somebody I wasn't but tried to like tune up who I was Yeah, because yeah. I was also kind of arrogant. Like I like, I like who I am, but right. like does anybody else actually like who I am? Mm. And there's no way that they would. Which sounds weird to say, but that's how I felt. <laughs> yeah. And I think that that was the biggest one amidst like, and I mean, that led to all kinds of problems with like girls and temptation and what I was looking at on my phone at mm -hmm. night mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff that was no good. That just led me to a place of more bro. Like, you know, just, it just feeds, it just feeds on itself. It's just a cycle yeah. of, oh, I don't think that, you know not just people, but like important people in my life, like family members or God or anything, accept me or love me for who I am. So I need to tune up and dial up the good. I need to dial up the good parts and tune up the bad parts. Yeah. Basically was what I was trying to do. Yeah. And trying to make myself like perfect, even though that's not possible. Mm, yeah. I'm never going to be perfect. And the more you like, it's good to work on your failures and on your weaknesses, but the more you work on your weaknesses, the more mediocre you become. So you should just focus on your strengths. Anyways, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, so I was just caught in that cycle and, um, that was definitely the biggest lie that I still kind of struggle with. Like it's mm. still kind of something I have to check myself sometimes and say, like, I think a lot of people in our culture have a hard time accepting help. Sure. Like yeah. a little, a little too prideful to say like, Hey, I need help. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Because we don't want people to know that we need help or that we're struggling or that we're failing or that we're sinning or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And part of, part of me wanting people to have this certain image of me or love me or not thinking I could be loved or whatever was making them have that right image of me, which then meant that I could never be wrong or mess up, which meant that huge. I was, which meant that I was locked off from any kind of real help because mm. I, I couldn't ask for it. I wouldn't let myself. So you just, you kind of end up just drowning in your own little cesspool of dysfunction. Yeah. And yeah. I was definitely there. So I think part of the, now what I try to do 
to kind of combat that is to make myself sit down and like just kind of try to sit in God's presence and just be like, just posture myself like humbly and just say, God, like I accept one that I need your love. And second, I accept it. Like it's good. Like God offers his love freely. Like we can accept his love. Yeah. Even though that can be hard because you have to, to accept his love and to believe in Jesus, you have to accept first that you're wrong. And you have yeah. to accept first that you are broken and in need of saving. So, and then you just have to let him save you. Mm. So, that yeah. is that is huge. I think that is worth the watch of what you just shared there because that's a lifetime of, or, or at least a high school, right? If I heard that back in high school, I think I'd walk a little different. Um, so that was super <laughs> encouraging. Yeah. Man, that that is so good. Just hey, that's you know <laughs> just spitting it out. Uh, Chase is an amazing I mean, person. You know. <laughs> my life is a sermon <laughs> <laughs> everyone your life is a sermon thank you guys so much Terrible. for joining us uh this is the youth podcast type video that we're messing with and trying to figure out so please comment if you'd like to hear something or know more chase would love to answer any questions that you did not get to ask today uh just go ahead and put those on our instagram yeah. or our youtube channel and we can get back to you on that hey we love you guys we're thankful for you guys. Uh, Chase, we're thankful for you coming in. You are our best Thanks friend for, for a lifetime. Me. And we will see everyone else next week. All right, everybody. Yeah.